How's it going, y'all? In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a video podcast. You might be somebody who wants to start doing a video podcast for yourself or clients. This is a video to watch. You'll learn how to set up a podcast. You'll also learn what equipment you would need to use to set up a video podcast. You also get to learn some of the software that I use to edit the podcast. All right. Let's get started. So what is a video podcast? A video podcast is a podcast that's a video. This is just a podcast that has a video component. Now there are a lot of different types of video podcasts out there. There's so many people talking about different type of things, screaming at each other, agreeing or disagreeing. Some video podcasts are like this, where it's just a camera, one microphone and one person. Now those are a bunch of podcasts that I just threw out there as examples. And the aesthetics of each of those podcasts, camera, microphone wise, can be achieved with this setup that I'm going to be sharing. So for video podcasts, there are two categories. There's video and audio. Let's focus on the video first. Now for a video podcast to work, you would need multiple camera angles. Depending on your setup, you might have just a one camera setup and you might just need one camera. So there's no switching that needs to be involved. Or you can even just use your webcam on your laptop. But I would recommend using multiple cameras for the simple fact that multiple angles on a video podcast makes the podcast a lot more interesting because you can have one camera for the host and then one camera for the guest. Switching in between the angles when one person is talking really helps out. To make that happen, I use a A10 Mini. Now, A10 Mini is a video switcher that has four HDMI inputs and it has one USB-C out and it also has an HDMI out. Let's focus on the HDMI's. Nowadays, most cameras have HDMI out that enables you to take the signal, to take the video that is capturing and send it to somewhere. We want to send the signal to a A10 Mini or any other video switcher out there. Now, if you have two cameras, you'd be able to connect an HDMI cable to here, then connect it to the A10 Mini that's camera one. Then you have another cam camera two, and camera two will have an HDMI out to the A10 Mini. So now this is input one, and this is input two. On the A10 Mini, it makes it really easy because each of these are numbered. This is input one, two, three, and four. When switching, it lights up, and you'll be able to see which input is currently active on the screen. So to sum it all up for the video part is that each camera will have an HDMI out to the A10 Mini. The A10 Mini will have a USB-C cable to my computer. My computer, I'll open up a program like Ecamm Live. So Ecamm Live will be recording what the A10 Mini is taking from these cameras. And each camera will have an SD card. The SD card works as a backup because each camera will be recording a video. Ecamm Live will be recording whatever the A10 Mini sees. So all the switching will be recorded. So I'll have a backup with Ecamm Live and I'll have a backup for each camera just in case because, hey, mistakes happen. Now let's get to the audio. There are several ways you can record audio. You can use a USB interface like a Rodecaster Pro 1 or 2 that takes four microphone inputs and you can record them onto a micro SD card or an external hard drive. The Rodecaster Pro 2 has the external hard drive recording capabilities. The Rodecaster Pro 1 does not but you can also connect to Rodecaster Pro 1 to your computer and use programs like Ecamm to capture the audio that is being recorded. It's pretty dope. You can also use an H4N Pro to record your audio. I actually like to simplify my whole workflow by using a Sony K3M XLR adapter. It attaches to the hot shoe of my Sony cameras and I'm able to connect three audio inputs. I'm able to connect two XLRs and a 3.5 uh, millimeter jack. So if I want to play music or if I have a lavalier and is baked into my video, that's actually how I'm recording this video. I'm using my Shure SM7B and it's plugged directly into the Sony a7 IV. And it's, it's been working pretty good. Normally I would record onto the Rodecaster Pro 2, export that audio, to align the audio and I use Final Cut to sync the audio and it works just fine. But to save me time, I use the K3M XLR adapter and it saves me a hell of a lot of time. Now, now that we have those two equipments out the way, I wanna get into the setup. 
I set up the cameras first. I want to be able to know where my host is going to be, where the lighting is, how I'm going to be setting up the lights, how many lights I'm going to be setting up, and how many cameras that I'm going to need. If it's just a two camera setup, I just set my main shot, put the lens on. I like to have a main station somewhere where, where the Rodecaster Pro is near me. My A10 Mini is near me so I can like switch in between different angles. I can raise the levels of the Rodecaster Pro in case I need to. I should be able to have the camera like really, really close by to check the battery life. Lighting is really important. I use a Godox VL150 and I also use a GVM 80 watt light. And in the studios that I have, sometimes, like I said, they're not that well lit. So I'll just use whatever practical lights I can just to make it look interesting. And for me, like the main thing is to eliminate any potentiality for failure. While I'm setting everything up, I'm wearing headphones, testing out the microphones as I plug them in, as I'm plugging up adapters. There are a lot of different adapters out there that have horrible static and you wanna make sure that you eliminate anything like that while you're setting up. So as I plug in each microphone, I'm like testing one, two, three, testing, testing out the audio quality, testing one, two, three. Hey y'all mate, we were testing out the microphones, yeah? Making sure they're all tip top shop, yeah? And I test that out, make sure that it sounds and looks good. Each camera angle, make sure that, hey, it's, in, it's matching the color make sure that there are no lens flares, making sure that it's not out of focus. And while my client comes in, they sit down, they are good to go and record. It kind of builds a level of trust because even though these are really, really expensive pieces of equipment, they're very technical and clients kind of lose respect for you. They kind of have this thing where, oh, this mic doesn't know what he's doing, yeah? Because you have a bunch of wires all, all over the place and something might fail. So when something fails, they blame it on you and they will assume that you don't know what you're doing, but they don't even know what an HDMI is, but they'll call you stupid. You know, you'll make mistakes. Mistakes are going to happen, but it's just eliminating the potentiality of mistakes by just testing everything. One thing that I do is that I kind of anticipate batteries to die. That's just something that we anticipate and we know, which is why I use a v-mount battery now v-mount battery they're like a lot larger i have a 190 watt hour battery for each camera and each camera never dies i never run into problems where my v-mount battery is dead but in the event that they do die or the event that a guest or a host knocks over the battery which probably never really happens but in case it does you still have multiple camera angles running the, the thing that you want to focus on is that is the project a complete dump after this if you have one camera and you have one microphone and both of them go out your show is over but if you have two camera angles and two microphones your host can still run your guests can still run you just have to make sure you get that camera back up or that microphone back up and that's how I like to think about things. And that's why I always have a backup. I mean, that's pretty much my whole podcast workflow. I uh, hope y'all enjoy that video. I uh, tried not to make it long, but it kind of ended up being a very long video. Thank you so much. I will also create a list of everything that I mentioned. Let me know if you have any questions in a comment down below. Thank you for watching. Have a nice one.